we're going to do some structural stuff first. Again, a little, a little less colourful uh, than last week, but all this will build into an idea. This is a kind of, you know, a pseudo uh, graffiti type of font. Very approachable. I have just drawn this. Um, very, very easy to customise. So let's do some lettering. So all the letters. I'll come this side. Start off as being vertical and horizontal lines. So once you get that structure in as, as a bar, just, just practice that a little bit. Again, I'm just using pencil. I hope you can all see that. Yeah, lovely stuff, just checking there. So again, just to get used to drawing those straight lines. Everything takes practice. If you don't have a straight line to start with, just keep drawing. Again, you might see that I'm using the ball of my hand as a kind of brace to then pivot on. So I'm using my wrist and the, the fatty bit of my hand there to pivot. So if it does come round to, to around a line, I've got a simple pivot that I can draw with. For straight lines, I'm using my uh, little finger's knuckle to drag down and keep level. So we're just drawing vertical columns at the moment. Nice and easy. I've just drawn five. Again, the more you draw, the better you become. So I've just got five vertical lines. If I put a horizontal line in from the bottom of this, it becomes an L. If I put a top line in, that can be an E. And then one in the middle. Three bars, there's an E. Things like a, like a P is where the pivot will come in. So what you've got to do, again, use, use the pivot of your hand. And you can sketch, again, the perfect thing with pencils is that you can guesstimate a line, confirm it, rub it out or draw again. There's a P. Again, I realize these are all capital letters. Uh, I will be concentrating on capitals. There are a couple of different um, bits that you can add. So things like the I, I always like to put a lowercase I next to the letters because it gives it a bit more of a friendly approach. It's not like it's shouting at you. It's a bit more softer. We'll get to that. So E, P, what else have we got? So we can do an H. So all I'm doing is using the two bars and I'm putting a bar right in the middle, going across. There's an H, just fatten this. Okay, and again F, very simple F, similar to the E where we're just using the bars. So these are just horizontal bars going across. There's an F, again that very similar to an E. If we were going fully block, we could block this up into a P. We could then turn this into a B if we wanted. Again, it's all about these pencil lines and just practicing these kind of vertical and horizontals. So with a curvy letter like S or G, they do become a little bit harder because obviously we all know an S, like a snake, S. Absolutely easy to draw a single line. However, with a second line in, there is foreshortening, okay? Foreshortening is where a line will uh, kind of compensate for the, the negative. So as it comes up, it will come round. So your, this is this side of the S, but ends up being the other side of the S. So I'm just gonna draw an S again. So I'm gonna, on this. And again, keep my hand nice and level on the, on the wall. But again, it's all about practicing. Use, use your eyes, use your memory of what fonts you've seen. Uh, I mean, you know, there's, there's famous brands out there that you'll recognize immediately uh, that use certain fonts. So this kind of S, very clean. I'm just gonna pencil them in a little bit more. So this is kind of based on uh, Futura, which is an amazing font used by a very famous artist called Barbara Kruger. You will also know this font from a very famous streetwear brand called Supreme. Um, I'm not gonna go into the, uh, the legal battle of Barbara Kruger versus Supreme right now, but 
The S's of Futura, all the letter forms in Futura font are exceptionally clean. Really, really neat, really balanced. Um, the leading and kerning, so leading is the distance and kerning is the, the size of this. Is, is such a nice font. Please, please have a look. Again, I know if I mention Supreme, you will automatically know what I'm talking about. The red and white letters, the capital S and the lowercase Supreme. But again, just to have a look at a couple of fonts and keep drawing them. If you've got a couple of my favorite fonts are Futura, Helvetica, Times New Roman, and a little bit biased, but my own font. So my fonts, I'm gonna show you my handwriting. I'm gonna do three different styles of writing that I would normally write. So I'm gonna use my handwriting, so my normal kind of casual writing. I'm gonna do my rune camo. So again, that's this. This kind of font, so very spiky, based on a kind of Scandinavian runes. Very, again, very angular. We, I'm using the, the kind of bars and the angles to create my own letters. You can do that as well. It's just a case of being quick and adding a couple of customization to it. So, let's get me pen. Excuse me, I'm just gonna choose a pen. Okay, so my normal handwriting would be like this. Hello. Nice and easy joined up, very simple, kind of casual. My rune camo, I'm going to write the same word three times. So my rune would be a lot more aggressive and a lot more kind of using the structures of the verticals and the horizontals. So hello, looks like this. Okay, I might put a bar in the L's. So again, you can see where the H and the H look. I've added another bar and a few dots. For the E's, especially, where's my pencil? I just bring in more bars. So if you were gonna draw it, it would look like this. So instead of just three bars, one, two, three, I've got at least five, sometimes six, sometimes seven. And again, put another bar in, in a circle. And I'm automatically customizing my font. So simply by adding a few, even just the dots or repeating something that's already in the letters, like the bars of the E, you can create something that's a little bit, oh, no, you can create something that's a little bit uh, more unique, a little bit more uh, human, a little bit more you. It doesn't matter if you're neat. First and foremost, the thing with the uh, paint repeat sessions, it's all about being creative. I don't want any kind of uh, limit or kind of uh, anxieties over uh, my drawing or what I can draw or even how it looks at the end. This is my sketchbook Just blown up a little bit. So I don't mind if there's a bit rough This is all a testing ground and that's what any bit of paper really should be. It's all about experimentation and testing So we've done our handwriting I've done my streets my kind of uh, hand style in my rune font and then I'm also going to do my cursive font. So this is a font um, I mean, I've customized it. This is, uh, it's called Good Vibes. So if you want to have a look at a really, really nice font uh, that you can use for graphics and, and obviously drawing as well, it's called Good Vibes. This is my version of it. And I'm using the, the kind of calligraphy version of this font. So. You'll see me draw this in the black pen in a minute and I'll go through exactly my, how I'm approaching this font. But again, like everything in life, practice makes perfect. If you see it and you are practiced enough, you will be able to draw it. And so this is, you know, practice makes perfect, as simple as that. Um, I love this font, very, very uh, approachable. I've used it quite a few times on different signage work and jobs. So again, You'll see the H and the L and the L and the O come in, but I'm going to make them a little bit fatter. I'm going to make it look like I'm using a calligraphy pen. So here's the H. Then come down. Slightly different change on the L because I know there's going to be a second bar in here. So this guy comes down again. But as you, have you, uh, excuse me, as you, as you have just seen, using that pencil line will give me a lot more confidence in my letter. So then with an O. 
So again, not amazing, not too far away from my actual handwriting style. Again, I'm just adding a little bit of thickness to the letters. At this point as well, if anybody would like to see me draw any letters that they are having trouble with, if they've got an interesting name or if there's a letter that you want to see me draw up, I can do. Please give me a shout. These are interactive sessions. Please feel free to uh, shout me out, shout Manchester's finest out. And again, any requests, I'm very happy accommodating because I know how kind of difficult this can be. I know how, um, you know, hard it is to get, get that confidence in those letters. So give me a shout. I will be doing the full alphabet of this type of font around here, just so you can see it as well. If anyone, please give me, if anyone's got any interesting names, a little bit of genealogy. Again, take a little bit more time than I am on this. You know, we've got a bit to go through today. And obviously it's doodling and drawing. Um, and certainly within drawing and, and letters. I love it because you can obviously create your own words. If you've got a nickname, think of your nickname and draw that. You can put it in three different fonts. Again, I'm only kind of um, showcasing a couple here. But it's all about practicing and seeing something you like and running with it. So I am cheating a little bit because I'm not using a calligraphy brush or a calligraphy pen. But because I know what these letters look like when they are drawn with a calligraphy pen, I can recreate it with something as simple as a marker or a Posca or a Sharpie. Everything is hand-eye coordination really, certainly within art. Being able to trust yourself and trust that you're going to end up somewhere that you like. If you don't like your piece of work so far, absolutely fine. Please do not throw these away. Um, again, like I've just had the gallery up. I like keeping all of my work so I can see where I've gone with it, where I'm taking it. Even if it is just an area of that work that you like, or a letter form, <coughs> or some shading or a colour, everything is experiment. Okay, so my handwriting, my rune camo, street art font, and the kind of a more cursive um, hand style there. This one is called Good Vibes. Please have a look online. This one is a lot more like Futura. So Futura. We're gonna concentrate on the S for a minute because that's, again, it's quite a hard letter, like a G where you've got different shapes to come in. So I'm gonna draw the G here. In fact, I haven't got enough room. Let's get enough room. So G's are like O's, but with a cut in as a capital letter. That's how I think about them when I'm approaching the drawing. So, again, I've put a couple of lines in there. You will get used to that. It will come down to one line. I mean, you know, no one can draw a perfect circle. Um, but with a G, we're going to divide the circle in half. We're going to just put a cap in here. Again, a similar angle to that S. And we're just going to come around nice and easy, nice and loose. And then it's got, a, so the, actually the G's a little bit thicker than that. So the top bar on the G here. Forgive me for not using technical language. If anyone knows what that part of the G's called, please let me know. And then all we're doing is using our eye to gauge, it's about an inch and a half. That needs to be a little bit bigger. And again, this is practice, practice, practice. These kind of, um, these measurements are very, very, uh, you know, they do come natural, naturally um, after doing them for so long. And again, practice makes perfect. So I'm just going to ink those, the S and the G in. And then we're going to start doing our bubble font. So again, I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of a background a little bit more of a structure to go down. So all we did so far is draw five vertical lines and we just added uh, horizontal lines to create letters. So the E started with just the bottom, the middle and the top. We added two bars to make that mine, to make that a customized font. We turned this into a P, so this has got a kind of semicircle over it. And I've just put another bar in there, again, just to customize it. But the H, bar in the middle, as usual. I've put one below, the two dots, a little custom. 
And then this started out as a block P and then we turn it into a B as well. So this can kind of hint at where we can take our vertical font. So with the S and the G, I think that G is going to come around a little bit further actually. Just from looking at the letters, I know that that's going to be a little bit further around. So I'm going to shape my pen. Excuse me. I'm just going to ink the S in and the G. So I'm always going to start on the, on the uh, ends of the S. Like I mentioned before with the foreshortening, you're ending up at the opposite side of the, uh, the vertical line almost. So try and keep it smooth. Again, I know I'm doing mine at a slightly bigger scale. If I was doing it flat on the table, I'd be able to get those in one line. But again, I know my S's, so I know I can break here, go halfway. And I know I can just do the top line, about, and the bottom line. A little bit rough that, but again, it doesn't matter, it's fine. And then for the G, Again, I'm, uh, for my halfway line, I'm just going to do the top arc and then try and do the bottom arc as well. Using my elbow and my wrist as a pivot. There's the top line. Do the other one because my hand is warm for that. Or warmed up. There you go. And then just the bottom half line. So we've got a shorter line and quite a long one. So continue that line down. And a G. Again, little customization bits. You can add asterisks or we can do some water droplets. But again, they seem a little bit too uh, alternative for the strength in those letters. So how neat they are. So we're just going to shape my pen a little bit more and we're going to turn these square edges into a bubble font. So again all we're doing is using the same structure as the vertical bars and the horizontal bars. A little bit of structure. You know this can work um, for a neater project. I'm not a very uh, neat guy. Um, I'd rather draw something creative and let, let creativity happen around me. So we're going to go through the bubble fonts. Again, I hope everyone's thinking of their names. I've just got uh, some messages from you guys, so please bear with me. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so come up with a nickname, um, and we're going to do these words in a second. Of course, of course, of course. Thank you to Frankie Clark, shouts to Set, and everyone supporting local artists around. Uh, cursive uh, basically means slightly slanted, right? This way or this way. Uh, so a cursive font will be a lot more kind of uh, loopy. I'll try and do an example. I'll do it in pink. No, we'll do it in uh, green. Why not? Okay. So cursive is basically anything like this at an angle. It's almost an italic font. Um, but again, cursive adds these little kind of flares. So you've got the kind of the drag lines. If it was a, a calligraphy pen, it would drag up before you then use the fatter edge to pull down. Again, if I'm using weird terms like calligraphy pens, Please Google it. That's all it is. Uh, basically, you know, we've seen uh, old Bibles or old like uh, book covers before and stuff. Everything used to be hand drawn with essentially fountain pens, but ancient versions of fountain pens. So you would have a thin line and a thick line for depending on how you held your pen. So the cursive element is this. So I'm just going to write cursive. I don't know if you can see that. But again, there's things like this R, like an old school R, to link the, to keep the writing fluid and uh, in the same font and the same size. And the new R's kind of take too much time. So within a, a calligraphy font, you would go U, then you come up and then down. That would, have, that, would be, that would be your R. And again, within the word, you can read it. On its own, it looks, it looks a, little bit, um, a little bit strange, I'll be honest. Uh, but again, it's all about the old techniques. You know, we are drawing, we are using pens and, paper, uh, and pencils. We're not using paintbrushes this time. Uh, we're just kind of taking it back to kind of, uh, you know, like an easy format 
um, and we're just drawing, we're still drawing. So we are still creating um, illustrations by drawing the letters. Obviously with uh, customization, you can then create characters within these letters. We are gonna go through the uh, lumpy thing in a minute, but let's just have a bit of a doodle. So if you've done your vertical lines and your solid letters, 10 points, thank you so much. But I wanna just take five minutes just before brew time. We are five minutes away from putting a kettle on and taking five minutes just to make a cup of tea. But we need a doodle. So I'm just gonna draw some silly faces. I'm gonna do them up here. If you've got a section of your paper or if you've got another sheet of paper that we can just doodle just to get our hands warm. So we're used to drawing straight lines and being a bit rigid with it. We need to loosen up a little bit and get those characters back in. So all we're gonna do, I'm gonna draw five faces. They're gonna be wearing hats and glasses. And they're gonna have beards. There might be a few skulls in there, uh, who knows? But again, please just draw five things. We've got five more minutes till brew time. One minute each drawing, it doesn't matter what it is. Again, you can have googly eyes, the tongue sticking out. Uh, you can have weird teeth. Um, you can have dreadlocks, anything you want. I'm just gonna doodle for five minutes. So I'm gonna warm my hand up, get my elbow ready to start doing some curvy lines. So let's do it. It really doesn't matter what you're drawing at this point. Again, we're just kind of warming our hands up and getting our fluidity back into our hands instead of these vertical ridges lines. Doesn't matter what you're drawing. So we've got one guy here. He's got some small shades on. There we go. Let's draw a guy wearing a Cap backwards, because I like drawing guys with caps backwards. Uh, okay, let's have. Nice happy dude, because it's a nice day today. There's two. Again, you can see that I'm drawing really loosely. Just being creative, drawing some weird noses and stuff. Whilst we've got this other big gappy teeth. And this guy's gonna have a really boring haircut. Forgive me if this is your haircut. <laughs> I don't have hair, so there we go. Okay, again, rough dude, doesn't matter at all. We're just kind of getting those pens out, getting some lines on the board. And again, breaking that page is so important. I know how difficult it is to kind of just be okay with uh, making mistakes or be okay with just having a sketchbook full of ideas. This is what these, are, these sessions are for, just to gain that confidence into, do it, uh, into doing it. And again, pencils and pens, using that pencil just as a baseline. Very, very uh, safe way of getting that confidence back. All right, he's got a hoodie on. Uh, let's do another face. Uh, what can this guy be doing? He could be waving. So we're gonna do, we'll do a big triangle. Waving, saying hello to everyone. There you go, you can have some trainers on. Again, if your drawings are <laughs> as amazingly uh, beautiful as mine, amazing. Um, I don't care what I'm drawing. And that's uh, one of the main things about art is just being creative. So uh, let's, do, let's do a sunshine, because we always like drawing sunshines. A bit weird. Little happy sun, why not? shades because it's sunny. Does the sun ever need to wear shades though? Discuss. Uh, is there some... He's not seeing himself. Crazy. Okay, so I've, again, just 30 seconds to a minute on the doodles. 
again, just to warm my wrist up and get into that idea of putting a bit more fun back into the letters. So we've done our verticals, we've inked them in a little bit so there's a bit more structure. So again, this is brew time, officially brew time. It's half past 10, I've got my heart mug. Cheers, everybody. Please take, excuse me, please take a bit of time. If you need it, grab, some, grab a cup of tea, grab some water, eat some fruit, get some fruit. Go and have a, stick your head out the window for 10 minutes and get back to yourself. Again, art and writing and just being creative, even doodling or pencil work will just kind of uh, loose, uh, loosen you up a little bit and get you back into the, the flow of everything. I know what's going on outside might be a, a little bit daunting. So again, it's vital that we take time. Give that person a phone call if you haven't seen them in a while. Double check on everybody and get yourself a cup of tea. So I'll be back in, well, a minute. You've got five minutes to go and uh, put the kettle on. Put your pens down, put your work down, take two minutes for yourself, go and make a brew. And when we come back, please have a couple of names in your head. So I'm gonna use Pete, I'm gonna use MCR, I'm gonna do MCR's finest as well, just in bubble writing, um, and probably NHS as well. We'll do that in blue. So do the NHS, we'll fill it. We'll go through the structures of these again, and how to round the letters off. And then all I'm gonna do is put some big words, or sentences or ideas just on the board and again anyone if anyone wants to shout me out with words they want to put on again i'm going to go for pete obs mcr finest and nhs so they're my four that i'm going to draw i've got a color for each one i'm also going to draw the alphabet up as well so you can see the structure of each of the letters and how i got to this kind of rounder edged against that strong edge there okay two minutes well, sorry, five minutes. I'll be two minutes. I'm just gonna go and put my kettle on. Um, stay safe, I'm gonna turn the music up. Two minutes, everyone. Okay, hello, my kettle is on. Although I've already got a bit of a brew here. So cheers everybody, hello again. Happy Monday to everyone. Welcome to Paint With Pete if you are joining us for the first time. Just sort my workstation out. Again, if you've missed any of the Manchester's Finest and Paint With Pete sessions, please check out Manchester's Finest. All the videos are on there. Um, we've had a couple of interactive sessions and I've done a bit of a showcase of my work as well. So for the first week, I asked the audience to suggest things for me to spray paint on my wall. And we came up with a big face um, outside, so you can see that in my garden. Um, and we had things like yeah, a narwhal horn, we had a Manchester skyline, we had sunflowers, we had, what else was there? Uh, things I'm gonna miss. Um, there was loads of different ideas in there, so please check out Manchester's Finest and the videos with Paint Repeat. And if you want an hour creativity in the morning, I've also got some on obsolete art Manchester. So perfect for the kids, flatmates or yourself. If you want to get a bit creative, you can do that with me for an hour. They're all on obsolete art Manchester. Okay, so I need my pencil again. I keep thinking he's behind my ear. He's not. So we're going to turn this S into a bubble S. So we're going to make it look a little bit softer. Soften those lines up a little bit, make it a little bit more approachable, a little bit more kind of uh, street arty, graffiti. I don't necessarily want to say I'm a graffiti artist. I do use spray paint and I do obviously draw letters. Um, but please have a look at, uh, I mean, classics like Wild Style. Excuse me. If you want to see what um, the 80s hip hop market looked like or the artwork that came out of that as well, please check Wild Style out. It's amazing. So, the yes, S, I'm going to do that here. So we've got our structure. Very simple structure. I'll go over this in black as well so you can see it. Again, this is just my sketchbook. I know there are many marks on here. So, we have our basic S. You can probably just see that. Again, all I'm doing, using my pencil to edit anything I don't like and remembering that line. You can rub it out. 
Um, but I don't like using a rubber because it, it breeds that um, you can change it idea. Really, really good to start with having a rubber next to you just to take those rough lines off and see your finish line. But I think those lines are part of it as well. So what we're gonna do is put lumps. We're gonna turn the S into a lumpy S. So we're just gonna be super fluid. And all I'm doing is gonna round off these edges here. So that's gonna come round. And again, the foreshortening, so the outside edge becomes the inside edge. And then we're just gonna put a big lumpy heel on him. So a heel here and here. Again, you're probably just seeing a load of lines. I can see that S coming through. So again, just get your black pen. Start on this top line, we can work out the heels in a second. So what we're doing, come round. Again, using that pivot on my wrist. Put the uh, tail in. Uh, this foreshortening again uh, took me quite a while to kind of get my head round. Um, I do a lot of window work as well, so on windows, like art on windows, um, and drawing it backwards is double hard. Um, but again, practice makes every single time. So we've got a kind of lumpy S. Not as super creative as these, so I'm going to try that one more time. I'm going to do a super fat S here. Again, I'm choosing S because it's a quite hard letter to get round. I like a challenge, that's fine. So I'm just going to put my basic structure in of the S, like this. Okay, there we go. My basic structure. Again, once you get to the tail end, you can, I basically come out of that line a little bit and just flow with it. One of the other reasons why I like listening to hip hop, certainly instrumental tapes when I'm drawing, is to keep that warmth, that kind of like softness in it. Okay, a little bit more fun. Shake a shake. Okay, exactly the same structure. So we're gonna go around the outside and come in. And we're just exaggerating those negative spaces a very little bit. Again, slightly exaggerating that, the heels. I'm gonna come right outside. And again, I'm slightly out of that line, but then coming back in to join him up. It takes a while to get that, uh, the curves in. Again, I can only show you, it is practice, practice, practice. Once you have that S again, you can start adding little reflective lines in there and it becomes a bit more of a bubble letter because you can see the, how light would hit it. There we are, so there's the S. Uh, have we got any more requests? Mr. Jeffrey, how we doing? Oh, Q is tough. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. Um, oh, good work, a transom. Um, I don't know, mate, someone will have to Google that for me. Thank you to Jeffrey for the interactions. Um, and the Q, okay, 3D lettering. We are going back to this a little bit. With the 3D, I'm gonna use the G as the example. We have our Q as an example, but again, a Q is simply just a, a circle, an O, with a bar coming out of it. Circular letters are very, very hard for 3D, right? Again, this is practice, practice, practice. Use, your, use, what, you're, what, use what you know, use the letters that you see around you. So if you see any uh, like a bus a bus logo, or um, you know branding logo, anything, but you have to use your imagination a little bit. So an easy way of doing that, we draw on our G, is draw the G again, just past it. So I'm basically drawing it forward and down a little bit. Terrible description. I do apologise, but you'll see this come in. So I'm just going to try and sketch this in. So again, we're just moving it down and almost using, we're trying to imagine it, okay? Again, I realize Q is a very hard letter anyway, but what I'm gonna do now is ink those back lines in. Should be right, you might see me squinting a bit, just to see if it's right. This is the hardest bit, because if you're doing a shadow, like a straight shadow, it's gonna have a, a different angle to it. So what I'm doing is coming around, and coming around. 
Okay, so you can see that shadow here and here. Okay, so again, if you've got tracing paper, this is a perfect way of using it. Um, so draw, draw a letter, trace it, and then move the tracing down a little bit, like an inch either way. Get your balances right. Again, I know I'm guessing a little bit on this. Um, so to make that a rounder letter, all you'd have to do is link these up. So there's a couple of extra lines you can put in just to give it a bit more natural shadow. All right, I'm not going to use my pen on that too much, but just to show you that shadow there. Okay, again, I know the circular letters are slightly harder, and uh, obviously if you are drawing a font, it's the circles that will test you um, because they have to sit right. Um, again, it's taken me ages to kind of get to being able to draw a simple O, but practice makes. So here we go, just a G, slightly moved forward and then colored in, you can see the guidelines there. Okay, so we're gonna do our alphabet. And I'm not, I'm gonna do some words. I'm gonna pick some words. So let's do NHS. I think NHS is a good one to start with. So again, nice and easy, three letters, N, H, S. I'm gonna draw it, outline it with a blue. I'm then gonna fill the blue. and then then gonna go around my lines my first lines of that blue in black, and you'll see it pull out. I'm gonna do that here. So again, you can sketch to start with. So, we haven't done that bit. We're gonna switch these up to the rounder font, I do apologize. All I'm gonna do is go back to my pencil lines on here, take my black, and just draw with a pen that works a circle version, like a lumpy version. So I'm gonna come out of the side of the E. I'm gonna round all the, all the bars off. So I know top and bottoms. And then all I'm doing is coming outside the line a little bit, just to give it a bit more of a round edge. These will all be negative edges to each other. And my pen will run out. So if I was to do a six bar E in the round font, it would look something a little bit like this. Let's do a P. So again, all I'm doing is coming out and dropping in a little bit and rounding those edges off, not squares, we're just rounding with a P. Coming all the way around. And coming down like that. These little structures will give you the middle lines as well. There we are. So I'm gonna write NHS, so I know an N is like this. Oh my dear. Switch that. Excuse me a second, let's just get a pen that works, that'll be good. Okay, so I know my N's like this. As a standard N, again, slightly italic. I'm just putting a circle line on that, and a circle line on that, and a circle line on that. Go them in. Again, being fluid, I can cement those lines in with my black in a second. And you can go as fat and as like um, bulbous or as like a you know, paddy as you like with your letters. Draw them massive. Um, draw them like they can't fit in the in the right in the box. I'll show that in a sec. Looks like I need to order some more pens, doesn't it? Yep. So NHS, I'm going to make that S a little bit fatter. So I'm just adding another accentuated line like we did with this guy. There we are. So again, all I'm gonna do is go round the letters. They're gonna be the f like this. They're gonna sit in front of each other. So I'm gonna come round. And down. By leaving a bit of extension line in the breaks of the letter, 
it makes it a little bit more rounded, a little bit more fatter. There we are. Put some hearts around it, why not? NHS. So again, just draw my drew my letters in in pencil as single lines, flatten them up a little bit using the structure of the letters, and then super flatten them up with that final line. So the next one, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put A, B, C, D, just because they're a nice selection of the letters as well. So we're gonna use this idea, we're gonna do it in pencil. So A, like this one, A, B, C, and D. So A, I've got a triangle. I haven't put the bar in because the, uh, the crossbar will dictate that when I draw it. So I'm just gonna draw a circle, or like a, sorry, a, a long oval, and then put a bar in as A. vertical bar for B. With B's and P's, I like doing two like that. Nice and big for the bottom one. And you might see the brakes here, I'll cover that in a second. With C, nice and big. So again, like the S's, the heels, want it super round. Yeah. And then D, again like the B and the P's, we're just making a triangle with that D. I'm then going to pencil that line in a little bit. In fact, I can just go over it in black for you lot. Lovely stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to use the outline. And again, like the negatives, or the, the holes in the letters, they are dictated by those exterior lines. So, go around that. And then again, I've already got that dictated for me because of the line structure. So, just concentrating a little bit more, you've got a nice fat A. With the Bs, again, vertical line. Rounded off at the bottom as well to keep this nice softness there. These are basically two, you know, oval lines. All I'm gonna do is see that gap and, and link it. So I'm just gonna go round it. And then again, because that line's already started with a curve, I know where I'm going with that line. And again, negatives are already dictated. There's a B. Again, C, nice and circular. So we're gonna come halfway to the heel. On the bottom one. And then with D, again like the B, a D is kind of half a B but extended. So I'm going to come round and down. Then again use that top line as a curve. A simple D. Okie dokie, so I'm going to write Manchester's MCR Finest. I'm going to do it in pink so it's nice and bright. Again, please colour these letters in. Uh, I hope your sketchbook is looking a little bit like this. Uh, I hope it's messier, quite honestly. Um, the messier the sketchbook, the more kind of um, experimental you've been. And that means that there might be a section that you like in a certain sketch or in a, in a letter form uh, that you can take forward and use in an actual piece of work. So we're going to write Manchester's Finest. I'm going to do it in a, like it's squashed together. Okay, so I'm just going to create my box. I can draw a box. Not perfectly square, but
but I know MCR is only three letters and finest is six. So I'm going to cut that in half just for a guide. So I've got MCR and then finest. Again, I'm going to do it quite, um, quite big and like, uh, yeah, filled up. So again, I'm going to put M here, C, R, just in pencil, straight line, like these guys. And then I'm going to bring these ovals in. So a nice long oval for the M. Down for the crossbars. There's an M. You can see this here. And then again, like that C, we want it nice and rounded. So again, it's like he's taking up too much space, like they're squashed in together. Again for the R, nice and flat. Two lines for that curve. All right, I'm just gonna kneel down. The eye. Again, here's that N. So vertical line, diagonal line, vertical line. Just move them up a little bit. Again, these letters are overlapping each other. That's fine. I want it to look full, and I want it to look a little bit squished. So I'm just doing the S here. Finish that heel up. And again, a T. Horizontal line, vertical line. I'm going to do this in pink, so I'm going to just go round it so you see the letter form. And then I'm going to fill it in, and then we're going to go round it in black as well so you see the final thing. You might see me kneeling down, that's okay. It's just so I can work at a comfortable height. And I get the right angle on my pen. So here's the skeleton of the font. There's the M. And we can go over that line because we know it's the same colour. There's a C. There's an R. The music is uh, my own, actually. This is a, a tune with a Eva B. Shouts to all Manchester musicians and artists. There's the eye. Okay, this might look like a load of ovals because exactly, that's exactly what it is. So again, just seeing these letters come out. I'm just trusting my pencil line. Knowing that the decisions I made in the pencil line can be edited if I needed to, but Pretty much there. And the T. Oops, there we go. And the verticals. Okay, so there's MCR finest in our bubble font. Do we know that little shake? Okay, now I'm just going to fill him in, test the pen. Lovely stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to colour him in. Again, you might not be able to see the uh, the letters just yet. Again, when you're filling them, you can go over those lines because you have the pencil behind it. You would have drawn it about twice or three times in the end, so you're getting to know where the letters are going. And you get to be a bit more free about it as well. Overlap those lines, don't be scared. Again, if, the, if you're only using pencil, I'm using uh, Poscas just for the clarity on the wall. But if you're using crayons or Sharpies or anything else, pencil crayons, even just pencils, this structure is, uh, is the same for everything. And again, everything starts with a pencil. There we go. Please don't forget to send us some work as well. Tag Manchester's finest. And Pete obsolete, that's me. In any of the pics, and we'll, uh, I'll put them on the Paint with Pete audience artwork. So if, uh, if your kids are drawing with me, amazing, hello. 
please stay creative guys whether it's your flatmates whether you're just drawing with me or even just watching me in the background good morning i hope everyone's doing good we're just getting creative right now a couple more ideas coming out for future sessions as well so the next paint with pete's uh, should be pretty interesting actually i'm excited looking forward to these okay Again, you can see me overlapping those letters because they're so close together. That's fine. If you wanted something a bit cleaner, space them out a little bit. Give them a bit more uh, sort of individual space. Just for clarity. But again, we're going down a kind of easy, street arty, kind of lumpy font today. Just finish these guys up. Okay, uh, so like the little um, eccentricities in here, I've put an I, like a dotted I, like a lowercase I instead of the, the capital letters. But I wanna put something extra in there. So I'm gonna put some um, water droplets like these, just to kind of give it another dimension. So what I'm gonna do, water, very simple. I'm gonna use my rounded pen. Simply by adding these, it will, yeah, again, it gives a kind of depth and makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit more like you've drawn it on a wall in New York or something. But it's all about having those ideas. Oh, yeah, I'm putting one in there. So again, I hope you're thinking of your nicknames. Um, I have had many nicknames. I've been uh, Miniman, Beefcake, <laughs> Obsolete, obviously Monarch as well, loads of different names. Um, I settled on obsolete because I like what it means. I like that it rhymes with my first name, but please come up with something, whether it is a, you know, silly Sally or something fairly simple like that. Silly Sally will fit really nice. Or if you've only got a, a you know, if you want to choose something like your initials, I could choose OBS, OBS. So it's the first uh, three letters of my art name. I could do anything like that. And again, those letter forms will, it's just really good practice to, so while that's drying, I'm going to do obs here. In fact, let's do that in a big yellow. So this is a three letter one. I'm just going to pencil him in. So again, nice and round, nice and loosey goosey. There's the crossbar for the B, or the, sorry, vertical bar. OB. This is going down a little bit, but a while. And again, there's the heel for the S, come round. And again, use that kind of fluidity of those letters and make your letters really strong. There we go. Okay, because an O might be quite fat, I'm gonna do that. So take my yellow outlines. Love this yellow. Again, just going around those those edges rounding them up a little bit. And then we've got a little. So there's three letters, OBS. Just quickly fill those in. Absolutely love this yellow. I know I'm speed fitting. There we go. Again, overlapping that, the borders where I can see them. Again, just using those shapes that we've got in our pencil marks, just to give us a bit of structure and to see where we need to go for that final line. So the next bit will just be a final line around the uh, MCR finest and the OBS. Again, you can add little things. I like adding crowns or halos uh, to 
piece of work slightly changes it gives it that extra little intrigue and what's it there for why is he why is he a king why is it a crown obvious references to royalty okay there's our obs finished in again i want to add something so yeah we'll just do a crown nice and easy maybe some uh, radiant lines Again, going over my canvas, absolutely fine. Lovely, so we're just gonna outline our MCR now. Last minute, last two minutes. Let's stay creative. So again, over those lines. With a C, that top bit, it's going to come over. You might hear me holding my breath when I do this. Sometimes I do, just to make sure I've got my balance right. And that, that pen keeps flowing. Here's that end. Oh, missed a bit. That's missed three. Again, with that black line around it, a whole different ball game. Just finish these lines in and then get our little globules done. Or drips. And last but by certainly no means least is the OBS. There we go. Give me a quick shake. Okay, come on. Outline it. And again, we're just going over the top. I can see my pencil line through this yellow, which will help. So you could say, I mean, you could turn these into bees if you wanted. Yeah, I can put. You know, customize it well, it will smiley be. There we are, my creative friends. That was today's paint with Pete. We did a bit of lettering today. Uh, so we just drew some straight lines, some bars, and just draw five vertical bars. We then uh, put some letters, uh, shapes in them. So we made an E and a P and H and a B. I then showed you my handwriting as well. So this is my handwriting, my street art hand style, and my like cursive font. So this is called Good Vibes. Again, please research your fonts, have a little look, find some stuff online, find your favorite book, draw that. We then did some uh, straight letters, spoke about uh, like branding like Supreme. So where you see the straight letters come in, we did some rounded edges, did a bit of shading on our G. Thank you, Jeff. We then did our NHS and ABCD, so a little bit of the alphabet. We then drew our Manchester's Finest, very nice. I, like, I love this pink. And again, the quality of these pens is insane. So this was OBS. And we also did a bit of doodling. So, I mean, personally, amazing session. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you to everyone shouting out and interacting. I'm gonna turn my hat around. Please join me next Monday for another Paint with Pete, 10 to 11. And again, if you need that time, grab some water, grab some food, get yourself 10 minutes outside, stick your head out the windows if, if you need. Uh, call someone you haven't spoken to for a while and keep being creative. Thank you for sticking with me. My name is Pete Obsolete. You have been watching Manchester's Finest. I'll say peace and love and stay safe.